2023, an area close to our neck of the woods. But it leads with Calyrex Ice Rider and Urshifu out on the field for Victor and Landorus Incarnate and the Urshifu for Shiliang Tang. Yeah, who is going to be happy in Honolulu? These are some heavy hitters. Of course, Calyrex Ice Rider is the slowest Pokemon on the field. That might be something that Victor is angling for because you can try uh, to twist those dimensions and have the advantage. But with two Urshifu on the field now, you have to worry about how those so do two Pokemon speeds are trained. First, though, we will get a U-turn into this Calyrex Ice Rider, giving Shi Liang the opportunity to pivot. And I like how he's immediately going for the pivot here. Given that the Landorus Incarnate will be taking super effective damage from a great Glacial Lance and also would not appreciate sticking around in Trick Room, I think this is a very safe play. Feel out how your opponent is going to approach the matchup and then respond the next turn. And Incineroar will go into that spot, but surging strikes into Incineroar on the swap. Not necessarily a prediction as both Incineroar and Landorus Incarnate are weak to water. So just a really smart play for Victor to target into that position. Rocky Helmet is the held item for the Incineroar. So that's going to do three ticks of damage onto Urshifu, breaking that sash and actually doing a considerable amount of damage. Damage. Now Shi Liang will respond with the three, three critical hits of his own into Calyrex. Nowhere near enough for the knockout, however. So now it's just up to Calyrex going on this turn with a Glacial Lance. Incineroar has taken a lot of damage. It is resisted, but it is enough for the knockout and the attack boost. No Trick Room was set up this turn, though. So if Shi Liang wants, now that the Calyrex Ice Rider has taken some significant damage in this previous turn, you can go ahead and target it with either your owner Shifu once again or the Landorus to ensure that you deal damage. Now, we did see that Shi Liang's or Shifu uh, moved second that time around. I'm not sure if that's something that we'll have to watch out for again moving forwards. But if you're certain that the opposing Urshifu is faster in this instance, I think you can safely target down that Pokemon with the Landorus. And again, another Surging Strike should do more than enough damage to pick up the KO on Calyrex. The, yeah, this Calyrex, as you mentioned, it's you know it's, it's already under half HP. We saw how much damage the U-turn did on the prior turn. So it's something that Victor understands. His Calyrex is not necessarily safe on the field while Shi Liang's Pokemon are faster. Exactly. And I think the one nice thing as well about going for that Surging Strikes first initially is that you'd still get some chip damage down onto that Pokemon even if the Calyrex use protect but no protect last turn which means it's certainly available for this turn well you can only protect against Landorus as the Earth Tower uh, goes into the Urshifu slot instead so no damage coming out from Shilin's Landorus and he has choice lock into the Earth Power but of course Calyrex is gonna have to eat those unseen fists from Surging Strikes Urshifu just enough on that third hit for the knockout so it looked like it was indeed the U-turn that made all the difference in that previous turn. So good notes for Victor to consider when we're talking about game number two in this set. Because given that lead, I think that the Calyrex was hoping to get Trick Room up a little bit sooner on in this matchup. Because again, if you look at how these teams match up on paper, Victor's team it would be more suited to play in a Trick Room environment. But Xi Liang has been able to remove that threat from the field. It did cost him the Incineroar, but I do think that the Incineroar's best positioning in this matchup is to face off against that Calyrex. That was a great trade for Xi Liang. And now you just have to get some damage on the field, maybe break the Ogre Pond's sturdy ability so you can get a KO there and then see what Victor brought into the last slot. Yeah, that Ogre Pond is going to be really crucial here in game one for Victor as its support with Follow Me being able to redirect attacks away from his own Urshifu. But now it's time to lock in the Terrasilization turn or game one for Victor. That's Tarot water You're going to be doing way more damage now with your surging strikes and you have that comfort of knowing because ogre pond can redirect the attacks away that your shifu is not worried about getting ko'd earth power is a neutral hit into ogre pond but he does does take that pretty well and of course you have sturdy as the ability anyway so no threat of being knocked out but there's the terror water boosted surging strikes into the landorus and it's gonna be a ko that was more than a one hit KO technically, but still enough damage to remove that Pokemon from the field. So great use of follow me from Victor there. We'll trade the Ogre Pond for the opposing Landorus. But once again, we saw that opposing Urshifu on Victor's side of the field move first. So really, 
assuming that Shi Liang doesn't have another speedy Pokemon in the back, maybe his own Ogre Pond, you've put yourself in a great position to clean up this game number one. And Raging Bolt will swap onto the field for Victor as both of these trainers are down to their two final Pokemon in game one. It's Shi Liang's restricted Calyrex Ice Rider coming in. Shi Liang's Urshifu cannot get out of this electric weakness on the other side because it is a stellar Terra. So if Raging Bolt goes for any attacks into that slot, it will be super effective. You do mention Terrastalization though. Raging Bolt cannot Terrastalize away from its weakness to Glacial lands and as of right now the calyrex ice rider on shi liang's side of the field is at full health and will continue to be at full health i think all shi liang needs is a, the opportunity to get some damage down on that pokemon shi liang uh, also protecting in front of an urshifu we've seen it two times now in this first game the unseen fist ability putting in so much work for both of these trainers bringing shi liang's pokemon down to half hp here's the close combat into victor's urshifu and that will be enough for the knockout. Absolutely trade those defense drops to get rid of Victor's or Shifu. Now it's all down to the Raging Bolt in a 1v2 scenario against Shi Liang's Pokemon. Winning this game is going to be so crucial. Draco Meteor only 90% accurate, but it uh, goes into Protect anyway, not mattering. I, I know you were gearing yourself up for it too. I was ready I was for the like... Draco into yeah, it's the Shifu there, yeah. I know, I feel like my heart always skips a beat when it's like, okay, where did Draco target? Yeah, and does exactly. that mean that it's not going to attack? No, that was a really great turn there from Shi Liang. And now we do get to see the reveal of the Stellar Terrestrialization as well on his Urshifu. And I love the Stellar Terrestrialization adaptation that many trainers made coming into this tournament because in situations like this, yes, you only can boost every attack type once per game. Oh! This is where it counts. That did so much damage. Essentially an adaptability boost onto that close combat, doing massive amounts of damage. Draco Meteor will respond with the KO into Shi Liang's end. So you do have a minus two special attack, Raging Bull, with the worries of, uh, of speed tiers. But of course, Shi Liang's Urshifu is faster anyway and has his own priority. Aqua Jet more than enough to handle these 10 hit points and Shi Liang's gonna win game one. A fantastic end game there by Shi Liang. A little bit nerve wracking in that final turn, I think trying to determine if your opponent would try to go for a thunderclap, maybe to pick up the KO on the Urshifu or target down the Calyrex Ice Rider as individually, both of those Pokemon were capable of cleaning up that game. But Shi Liang correctly making the call there to go on the offense with that huge close combat into the opposing Pokemon, save the Calyrex Ice Rider for the next turn at which point aqua jet plus any attack depending on what that raging bolt would have picked locked in that ko now i'm wondering on on uh on shi liang's end because he was able to preserve the calyrex so much later on and it didn't end up turning into a trick or mirror or having the two calyrex in the field at the same time that if you're victor do you kind of steal that strategy and and don't let your calyrex i started to get knocked out as early as it did in game one you know looking at these teams as well i do have to wonder if Shi Liang even wants to try and go for a trick room approach. I, I don't think he does. And I think Victor, while it would have given him a bit of an advantage if he had brought different Pokemon to that game number one, given that he led with the year Shifu, we also saw the Ogre Pond, the Raging Bolt. Those are all naturally fast Pokemon. I think that if you're confident in maybe how your Calyrex Ice Rider is trained, especially for a mirror matchup situation, you can make the call in team preview. Like, I don't want to go for trick room this time. That all being said, I do know that some trainers preparing for the World Championships were actually looking at running more neutral speed Calyrex Ice Rider or even invested speed Calyrex Ice Rider, specifically for situations like this. And given how quickly we're jumping into game number two here, I think both these trainers have their game plans ready to go. All right, well, Victor's hopes of making top cut here in Honolulu are on the line as he is down a game to Shi Liang Tang here in round 11. Shi Liang with the lead of Incineroar or Shifu. This time, or Incineroar can't take a bunch of damage on the swap in because it's already on the field. It is already on the field, but that does mean it is also immediately threatened by the presence of the opposing or Shifu. So Shi Liang does have access to fake out for this turn, but will have to look towards that Pokemon to stop it from getting a really one turn knockout, at which point the Calyrex could go for Trick Room, could really do what it wants in this situation. Victor going for the Terra straight up on turn one, waited a couple of turns 
turns the last game to you know to kind of see the situations but here's the terror water surging strikes right into that incineroar you know there's no citrus berry it's the rocky helmet on this time so Xiliang, is he willing to trade these three ticks of damage from rocky helmet to lose the incineroar remember no fake out on that turn either technically the three hit one hit ko however you want to determine it always a fun discussion but regardless it leads to incineroar getting knocked out on turn one without really doing anything beneficial for the Shili Yang. Now our chief is going to respond with his own surging strikes. The big question here, though, is what strategy is Victor going to take moving forwards with this Calyrex as the Incineroar was one of Shili Yang's best answers to this Pokemon in game number one. Going into this game number two, we see a single target Glacial Lance doesn't do a lot of damage to that opposing Urshifu, but Victor once again indicating that he is confident for going Trick Room on a turn that otherwise would have been a very easy opportunity for him to go for that. That's right, Gabby. Two game ones, or turn ones in a row has not clicked the Trick Room instead going for the Glacial Lance. Now Choice Scarf Landers Incarnate comes onto the field can only lock into one thing. Do you try to prioritize the U-turn damage? We saw how much it did the Calyrex last time around. But at the same time, that Urshifu's looking mighty juicy at half HP. That could be a pretty good <laughs> target for this Choice Scarf Landers to go into. Oh, smartly though, Victor having the same concerns we did that her, his Urshifu looked in a tough spot. So Rillaboom will swap onto the field in that spot. Sandseer Storm hits, connecting onto both. Not the easiest thing to do <laughs> a Landers in the surge Strikes follow up will KO this Kyler X. Shiliang Tang correctly identifying that he needed an opportunity for some additional damage on the opposing Calyrex to ensure that KO. And while Sansier Store isn't the most accurate move, it is Landorus Incarnate Form's only opportunity to go for double target damage as they are typically trained in special attack as opposed to the uh, other form at, which will run physical attack, rock slide, yada yada yada. Yeah. We've been there before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I love though how Shiliang again is prioritizing knocking out that Calyrex Ice Rider initially to open things up for presumably once again his own Ice Rider in the back of his party. I do feel like Victor feels really confident with the rule of him on the field right now. One, you have Grassy Glide with Grassy Terrain that threatens Shili Yang's or Shifu. Can't Terrasalize out of it because of Stellar Terra. And remember, Landorus is choice locked into Sansir Storm, so you're not threatened by Sludge Lomb whatsoever. Shili Yang would actually have to swap out to reset its attack. And if it is indeed the Calyrex Ice Rider in the back of his party, I don't think he wants to risk making that switch and taking any damage in the process. Real Boom does get hit by the Sansier Storm, but remember, because of the sheer force ability, there is no secondary effect from the Landorus. Urshifu on Shiliang's end will knock out its counterpart, so Victor's Terrasalized Pokemon has been knocked out here in Game 2, but it's up to Real Boom on this turn. Which of the two Pokemon on Shiliang's end did he target? That's a Wood Hammer! with the grassy terrain boost into the Landorus for a one-hit KO. And that was the Pokemon he needed to knock out if he's worried about the possibility of Raging Bolt succeeding in the future of this game. Sansir Storm would have done so much damage. It is actually the Ogre Pond in the back of his party, but still, Sansir Storm, a incredible attack against this Pokemon in particular. You still have the Grassy Glide available for the opposing Urshifu, but now you have the opportunity to go for a Rock-type Ivy Cudgel against the opposing Calyrex Ice Rider. There's still a couple of tricks up Shiliang's sleeve, though, that he could fall on here. One thing in particular, we have not seen Shiliang terrestrialize yet, and this Calyrex Ice Rider is actually Terra Normal. If you were running the standard Terra Fire Calyrex Ice Rider in this position, you'd still be taking super effective damage from that Ogre Pond, but you can at least reduce things to a neutral hit, which will sort of, which will open things up a little bit more, but still, Victor has found an out here to chase to bring us to a game three. Yeah, I think that Terra Normal here we're gonna see from Shiliang can be crucial because it was set as a Calyrex Shadow Rider counter, but really it's benefiting Shiliang right now against Victor's team, making those hits neutral instead of super effective. Aqua Jet doesn't do too much damage to the Ogre Pond, but the Power Whip into Calyrex brings it down under half HP. Both of these grass types are taking advantage of the grassy terrain, and that's another KO for Rillaboom. Victor, following what Shi Liang did earlier on in this game, double targeting the opposing Calyrex and opening up the door for him to stay in this competition. Two grass types against an Urshifu. 
even if it could use its stellar terrestrialization, it does not <laughs> have enough damage to take down these two Pokemon. Yeah, that is the absolutely crucial play of this game was Rillaboom one hitting Landorus because once Sludge Bomb is out of the game, you don't have to worry about threatening Rillaboom anymore. You can stay here and use those grassy terrain boosted wood hammers. And at any point now, it's just your Shifu. You can even click Grassy Glide if you want. You still have to be a little bit careful here with how you approach things just to be safe. However, Victor will indeed win that match thanks to the forfeit from Shi Liang Tang. And we're getting the game number three in this final round of Swiss at the World Championships. That's all we can ask for, Gabby. Honestly, game threes are so intense. I can't even imagine what's going through. Their hearts must be pounding on stage. I'm nervous just watching. Well, especially since the matchup is so close. Just like you said, it was the Woodhammer into that Landorus Incarnate that gave Victor Mendina the opportunity to fight back. Shi Liang could have very easily made a switch there or otherwise tried to stop that Rillaboom from finding that alignment. I think going into game number three, you have to respect that threat from your opponent as the Landorus Incarnate was a huge important Pokemon for Shi Liang. I don't think you necessarily can comfortably lock into Sandseer Storm, especially knowing that your opponent had two grass type Pokemon in the back. So going into this game number three, I'm really curious if we're gonna see Shi Liang try and preserve that Landorus so that Sludge Bomb is available when you need it. Yeah, I think Landorus Incarnate is in such a difficult position because it is absolutely crucial to Shi Liang's success in this set. And the issue is if it goes down, you're kind of losing a lot of the checks into Victor's team. There is the chance Ogre Pond Teal Mask doesn't mind taking grass attacks, right? It takes no. it better than Landorus uh, as a grass type Pokemon. So we'll see if there are any adjustments in this crucial game three, winning in for top cut of the world championships. Or Shifu Rillaboom for Victor and Incineroar or Shifu for Shiliang. That Incineroar loves connecting the Intimidate against the Rillaboom. Also seeing the Rillaboom turn one from Victor will help Shi Liang pivot a potential Landorus Incarnate in the back a bit more correctly. Both these trainers have access to fake out this turn. I wouldn't be surprised if we just see two fake outs thrown in the Urshifu's directions, just because that will stop them from attacking for this turn and then give you a little bit more time to figure out this board state. It would also break the focus sashes as well. So that's something that these trainers have to worry about. Do you protect on this turn, trying to preserve that against fake out? That's the, that's the pressure fake out provides. Exactly. And then you've added an additional mind game on top of that of, well, if I think my opponent is going to use detect this turn, I could try and target down my own Urshifu's attack into that Pokemon. So I think the safest play is to just click fake out into the opposing Urshifu and try and power things through. But Shi Liang, I think maybe, in the, assuming the fake out was going in that direction, making a switch. Let's see, there is the Ogre Pond Teal Mess, the hero of the DLC. From Kitakami to Honolulu, Shi Liang brings Ogre Pond out and it's Terra Grass Incineroar for Shi Liang in this game. So completely swapping up his strategy from the first two games of this set. Rillaboom's fake out goes towards the Ogre Pond on the swap in. That doesn't matter since it's not attacking. Oh! And the Surging Strikes is now into a Grass type, resisting. Rocky Helmet's gonna do more damage than Surging Strikes. And a great adjustment from Shi Liang because his Terrastalization in game number two ended up not helping him win the board state. If his Incineroar was able to hold on, break the Focus Sash thanks to Rocky Helmet, and honestly do more damage to the opposing Urshifu and, and he burns, up and the burn. He burns the Urshifu landing Will-O-Wisp already at half HP going to take even more recoil from the burn as great of a turn one as Shilian could possibly ask for. This Incineroar is ready to go on the offense. Honestly, could try and connect another Will-O-Wisp against the opposing Rillaboom as well. If that Pokemon switches out to the Calyrex Ice Rider, it won't be able to Terrastalize. If you land a bird against the Ogre Pond, it's gonna have its attack. There is so much opportunity for this Incineroar thanks to that grass type terrestrialization. The opposing Ogre Pond as well could throw a bullet seed into the opposing Urshifu and regardless of what Pokemon comes in, that is damage. Shi Liang has so much momentum in this position right now. And the beauty of Ogre Pond, Teal Mask on the other side as a grass type with follow me is that you're not oh! able, oh, actually he's encoring it into the fake out. Encore the tech that Ogre Pond has used. It's probably helped Shi Liang get to this position. Now Rillaboom is locked into fake out and it's burned 
Rillaboom's attack will be halved for the remainder of this match. Rillaboom also can't do anything thanks to that Encore. A great play there from Xi Liang. The way that those speeds interact for Encore on the Ogre Pond Teal Mask, it is not a Pokemon with Prankster like you typically see on Whimsicott. So you'd have to predict that your opponent is not going to go for Grassy Glide, a priority attack, at which point you would lock them into that move. Now, mind you, not the worst move to lock a Pokemon into in this board state, but still, the fact that it was Fake Out that got Encored is such a punishing move in Xi Liang's favor. Right, because that essentially means Rillaboom is useless. It is forced to swap out on Victor's end. This is information Xi Liang can take advantage of. You know there's only one potential attack coming from Victor's end of the board this turn, but it's time to terrestrialize in game three, and Victor bringing his restricted. It's gonna be Calyrex Ice Rider, the most important Pokemon turning into a fire type. There still is that water type Rapid Striker Shifu in the back of Xi Liang's party though. So while this Calyrex may have escaped, not only just a uh, parting shot thanks to the clear amulet, but the threat of Will-O-Wisp as well. This is the perfect opportunity for Xi Liang to send in a Pokemon that can deal that super effective damage. Yeah, he does have, we do see that is revealed now that Xi Liang has revealed all four Pokemon that the uh, Landorus was not brought in this battle. It was the Ogre Pond Teal Mask replacing it for the crew. Glacier Lance will connect onto both, breaking the Focus Sash, not doing too much damage to the opposing Calyrex on the other end. But Ogre Pond Cornerstone, crucially, still has its sturdy intact and can follow me away, the attacks away from this Urshifu that would be threatening Calyrex. It's a tough prediction to make here. I do think that there's benefit for going on the offense with Victor with both of these Pokemon because you know the opposing Urshifu would be faster than your Calyrex. That's right, Rocket's Eyes! Pawn is faster Super too. effective critical hit, Ivy Cudgel. Two different underrepresented Ogre Pond forms are taking over the stage right now here in round 11. Surging strikes from the Urshifu is super effective, but Calyrex is just so bulky. It's able to endure those three hits. That critical hit on the Ivy Cudgel was huge as well because we saw that Ogre Pond take an attack drop from the parting shot earlier. Calyrex was forced to go for a high horsepower just to get a little bit more damage down on that opposing Urshifu, but we've seen how the speeds interact. We know that the Ogre Pond cornerstone on Victor's side of the field would be faster. You do have to worry about fake out here if now it doesn't get faked from out. Yeah. the Incineroar, <laughs> but I do think that Victor can simply go for a Protect and a Spiky Shield this turn if Fake Out is what you're worried about. You cannot risk switching in your own Ogre Pond in this position just because the Calyrex Ice Rider is still on the field and is still able to use Glacial Lance, at least until your Urshifu knocks it out. And Xi Liang has such a, def a strong defensive core. Instead of the Rillaboom being with his buddies Urshifu and Cineroar, it's the Ogre Pond as the grass type of choice. Victor's two Pokemon in the back are both burned and physical attackers. So a lot of his damage output has been hindered. It has, but these Pokemon as well, switching in, he didn't have to use Protect. That's right, Wolves is gonna go into the Rillaboom who was already burned, but uh, try, trying to play supportive with this Terra Grass Incineroar. Don't wanna go for any damaging moves, just try potentially burn the rest of the team down. Even though the Rillaboom is burned on the opposing side of the field, it can still go for Fake Out. It is still a useful Pokemon for Victor in this situation. So by switching both these Pokemon in in the previous turn, you don't have to worry about Will-O-Wisp, you don't have to worry about being flinched, and you buy yourself more time, as Victor still has the Pokemon advantage in this matchup. Right, especially especially uh, important considering how those first couple of turns went in Xi Liang's favor here. Urshifu will detect, keeping itself safe from an attack from Rillaboom, but not from Urshifu. Unseen Fist does not finish the job. Xi Liang is still going to hang on in the red with his Urshifu. There's the Rillaboom, but it goes into the Protect. So smart play from Xi Liang, not allowing Rillaboom to swap out and reset that grassy terrain. Insult to injury as I stop your U-turn, but Party Shot Let's consider our swap out for free. That Urshifu on Xi Liang's side of the field, though, is very low in health to the point where an attack from either of Victor's two Pokemon would do enough damage to knock it out. And Xi Liang's win condition right now is keeping that Urshifu around for the return of the Terrifier, Calyrex, in the back of Victor's party. Xi Liang switching in the 
Ogre Pond, Teal Mask in this board position does mean that he can then switch in the Incineroar again for that Urshifu. But Victor can easily punish that play. You just double into that Ogre Pond. Maybe you double into the Incineroar, depending on what moves you want to target. Yes, you do worry, have to worry about the burn modification on the damage on the field, but two attacks from these Pokemon is still going to put Shi Liang's Pokemon closer to knockout range from the Glacial Lands, which right. is really exactly. Victor's winning condition for at, this game. At a certain point, Shi Liang, even if he is statted, you know, given the stats conditions to his opponent, he's running out of health on the exactly. three Pokemon that are still on his side and available to him. Of course, the Incineroar is still very healthy, but that Urshifu was not long for the match. There's the Aqua Jet, so a perfect swap in, bringing the Grass type, even with a critical hit, hardly doing any damage there and taking even more back. There's the Bullet Seed we talked about in Team Preview. It's not going into an Urshifu, but, you know, let's see how many hits you can get with a loaded dice Bullet Seed into Rillaboom. I mean, that's three hits. That's and four, four. four is guaranteed, so it's always four or five hits. Oh, and then the Ogre Pond doesn't come through with the fifth hit. Finally, Rillaboom is able to swap out with its U-turn. Still, though, that was a very significant amount of damage onto that Rillaboom at the end of the day. Yes, those are resisted hits, but still overall down to about half its health. The only Pokemon with full health on Victor's side of the field will be his Ogre Pond Cornerstone, which critically still also has that sturdy ability in play. While Calyrex is very tempting to send in on this board position, you're staring down two Grass-type Pokemon. I don't think you can take that risk as a Bullet Seed with four hits plus a knockoff certainly would do enough damage to pick up that KO. And if you leave that Urshifu just unattended on the opposing side of the field, I'm not sure it's going to be able to do much either. So really, all Shi Liang has to do in this board position is focus down on that Calyrex Ice Rider. Sure, maybe you wait a turn here. Maybe Victor's probably going to go for Protect on that Calyrex Ice Rider to buy himself one more turn. Uh, but there's really nothing that's going to stop your two Pokemon barring a critical hit. And even then, they just have so much health. Yeah, there's a lot of health on the other side. And even if Victor's Pokemon there, hit points are going lower. You'd argue the one Pokemon you want to stay at full HP is Ogre Pond Cornerstone. So you have access to the sturdy that you were talking about, Gabby. On this turn, though, Victor crucially will protect himself from the fake out. Fake out goes into the Calyrex. So now it's going to be up to the Ogre Pond, who is faster than Urshifu, clicking a follow me to redirect the attacks away. Will be close combat onto the Ogre Pond. How well does he take it? That's a with the crit, it brings Ogre Pond down to half. That's not what Shi Liang wanted to see. One more turn of burn damage as well ensures that this Urshifu will be KO'd at the end of this turn if Victor keeps it on the field. And honestly, seeing that you already rolled a critical hit on that close combat, you might as well go for it again. Your opponent most likely, your opponent, actually, your opponent wouldn't waste time picking up the KO there unless they had a spread move hit here, just because that Calyrex Ice Rider is so scary. But remember, with the pressure of Encore on the field as well, this switch is such a safe play from Victor. And it's also crucial for Rillaboom to swap on to reactivate Grassy Terrain since the burn would have knocked out Urshifu if he didn't. There's a close combat. No crit means no KO. Shi Liang gets to keep his Ogre Pond on the field. Minus two into its defenses. The Bullet Seed goes into the Rillaboom yet again, so not getting too much value. It adds up over time, especially when you get some nice critical hits. Oh, yeah. Uh, to boot, but that's three hits of the Bullet Seed. This is the fourth. That's the guaranteed. Can he get Get the fifth one no two times loaded dice has come up short but the knockoff follow-up will be more than enough to take out Rillaboom or Shifu though like you just said Joe sticking around for one more turn thanks to the help of that grassy terrain but grassy terrain is also going to heal up the Pokemon on the opposing side of the field as well and again we know that her Shifu needs close combat to get a critical hit to pick up the KO on the Ogre Pond from this range Victor is down to his final three Pokemon with that Ogre Pond Cornerstone, still the only Pokemon on his side of the field at full health. And with Follow Me, it would redirect the attacks away, meaning this low health or Shifu with all the defense drop can continue to go for these critical hits because the grassy terrain activates before the burn damage kicks in. It does, but how many turns are you gonna have the opportunity to do this? And on the off chance that you think your opponent 
this is such a tough position to be in. I feel like you want to go for the Ivy Cudgel here just to get the KO on the opposing Ogre Pond to force out the opposing Urshifu and just hope that you can pick up the knockout Wait, on so it. It's, it's Spiky Shield and Rocky Helmet on the other oh, end. No. So no matter what Victor targets into, he's going to take the recoil damage and knock itself out there. The close combat does so much damage. But the... Oh, hey, John in the red. I thought that was going to be enough. I thought he got the grassy terrain recovery. Helped Shili Yang hang on in that fight there. Uh, the party shot is able to lower the attack even more. He's already been burned. It feels so hurtful to do it there. Uh, but no, the uh, our chief actually didn't make contact because it broke through the spiky shield. Exactly. I know that's one of those mechanics yeah. that you have to really keep queued up and ready to go. But I think more importantly, the fact that we see the Urshifu return to the field on Shili Yang's side of the field, get that little bit of health back, uh, probably to help it try and hold on through an Aqua Jet from the opposing Urshifu in a further end game uh, is something important to keep an eye on. Shili Yang most likely will be returning that Incineroar to the field though this turn. I think that you want to get those Intimidates down onto the opposing Ogre Pond, and I just worry that if you leave the Urshifu on the field while the opposing Ogre Pond is still at such full health, you're going to end up in a situation where the Ogre Pond, naturally faster, will be able to pick up the KO there, and then you just have your entire strategy, unfortunately, uh, start to crumble. So Shi Liang needs to get that Incineroar back out onto the field and really needs to put the pressure down on this opposing Ogre Pond, who has critically become the cornerstone of Victor's strategy in this endgame. That's why they pay you the big bucks, Gabby. That's a great <laughs> pun. Always a fan of the puns on the broadcast. Aquajet finally deals with Victor's Urshifu, which hung on at 7 HP for three turns, finally getting knocked out. Power Whip into the low health Ogre Pond will be more than enough for the KO. So Xi Liang down to his last two Pokemon. Going to be but two Pokemon you'd love to have are Shifu and Incineroar versus Ogre Pond Cornerstone and a low health Calyrex. Sturdy is still active on this Ogre Pond Cornerstone. And Cinera returning to the field will intimidate that Pokemon, though, and also bring back with it the threat of Fake Out. While this Cornerstone Ogre Pond could go for a Follow Me redirection here to ensure that the Calyrex gets the opportunity to attack, you do have to wonder how many Glacial Lances will it take to pick up the KO on the opposing Incineroar. Yes. The Urshifu will be KO'd in one hit, but Calyrex, with such low health, the fact that its clear amulet is still held on does mean that Knockoff should do enough damage to pick up the KO there. So Shi Liang really needs to find the opportunity to focus in on this opposing Ogre Pond. Doesn't have to worry as much about the threat of a spiky shield here, but still, Everything comes down to this turn. Let's see what Shi Liang can do. The fake out goes into Ogre Pond Cornerstone's spiky shield. So going to be a little bit of a taste of your own medicine from the Rocky Helmet, right? And Sinner was going to take a little bit of recoil damage. Yep. Surging strikes from her Shifu takes out the Calyrex. And now that the Calyrex has been knocked out, this Urshifu is free to focus in on the Cornerstone Ogre Pond, will be dealing neutral damage to this Grass Rock type Pokemon, but still the combination of that Urshifu, of the Incineroar at so much health, is giving Shi Liang the motivation he needs to find his way into the finals. Shi Liang goes for the detect on this turn, wants to see what Victor's up to. The power up goes into that slot, so Shi Liang calls it correctly. Now it's up to the Incineroar going for will -O landing Love another one. All three of his will -O connecting on this game three, crucial. It's a good insurance though to have. You're able to lower the attack of this Ogre Pond Cornerstone as much as possible. While you do still have to worry about that power whip dealing damage to the opposing Urshifu, it's not necessarily that Pokemon that you're trying to protect from that burn. You're trying to give this Incineroar enough time to ensure that regardless of how much damage this Aqua Jet does to the Ogre Pond, Incineroar is able to beat Ogre Pond in the end game. Power whip super effective taking out Urshifu. So now it's one on one. This Terra Grass Incineroar that Shi Liang broke out on turn one of game three is potentially the way he can win this. There's three minutes left. There's no shot. This match is going to last three minutes with just two Pokemon left. A spiky shield here is a good play from this Ogre Pond to see what Shi Liang is going to lock into. But critically, will be dealing a bit of chip damage thanks to the spiky shield recoil. 
and critically. He's been put, he's been, the Ogre Pond's been yes. part shot. It's been burned, but there's so many chances for Ogre Pond to try to come back in this game. A oh, he got a the double. double. Spiky Shield okay. means that Xiliang has now taken two more turns of recoil from these hits on Incineroar. It's put him lower, and all you need is a crit. All you need is a crit, and I believe Ivy Cudgel's raised crit rate is going to be so important here in this endgame. You could try and go for a third spiky shield, He's gonna but go that's for it. It's only a 10% odds. chance. Victor oh. doesn't get the spiky shield, and Xi Liang is going to knock off Victor's Ogre Pond and knock him out of contention for the World Championship.